recording this just for those students who are unable to make it today. So today we have our day one panelists and we have a handful of firms here, um, all of which are great firms. So first off panelists, if you guys will just go in order of your listing here, and if you'll just introduce yourself and your firm. So if Matt, you wanna kick it off and introduce who you are and who Burkhart and Company is. Yeah, can you hear me and see me? Can you hear me? I can, yes. Yep, okay, loud and clear. Good. Hey, yeah, so I'm Matt Davis. Uh, I work at Burkhart & Company. Uh, we are a niche uh, professional services uh, company here in Knoxville. Um, so we work a lot with family offices and entrepreneurs. Um, you know, they always keep us busy. Uh, lots of exciting work on um, transactions and uh, tax compliance and planning. Um, so that's a little bit about us. I'll go next. Uh, my name is Maggie Bates and I'm a senior audit manager with Crow. Um, I'm in the Knoxville office. We are a top 10 um, national firm with about 45 offices across the country, um, working in every industry that's out there. Um, I've been at the firm for about nine years, mainly working on private company audits. Um, uh, Sorry, lost my train of thought here. It's been a busy day. Um, we do audits, uh, tax work, consulting, and we have a um, data science business unit as well. So one of the, the um, larger, coming from the larger firm perspective today. Great, thanks Maggie. Um, I'll go next. Hey everybody, uh, thanks for the opportunity to, to share some thoughts on virtual networking uh, today. My name is Michael Bedard, I'm a manager in Deloitte's uh, audit and, and assurance practice uh, based out of Atlanta. So we have audit, tax, advisory services, um, and we have offices uh, throughout the country. Drew? Thanks, Michael. Hey, everyone. My name is Drew Ford. I'm the campus recruiter for EY's Tennessee Market. Um, I've been with EY for about two and a half years and have always had UT, so nothing makes me happier than this time of year to really come back to campus even in a virtual setting and begin to find great new students. Um, we are a member of the big four, so we have offices all across the country um, and are traditionally looking for candidates that are interested in audit, tax, or consulting practice. All right, I'll go next. Hey everybody, my name is Meredith Norris. Um, I'm a tax manager at Novinger Ball and ZB. Um, we are just a local Knoxville firm, um, but we have about 32 employees. Um, I've been with the firm about three years now. Um, was with a larger firm before that. So I actually went to UT undergrad in Mac. Um, seems like it was just yesterday, but um, definitely different for y'all this year. So I feel for you and thanks for participating and having an open mind. Um, so really happy to be here and look forward uh, to getting to know you all. My name is Katie Scott. I'm Director of Talent Acquisition here at PYA. Thanks to uh, Rachel and Hunter uh, for getting us all together this afternoon. They've been navigating a lot. This is a unique time for all. Um, so a little bit about PYA. We are headquartered in Knoxville. We have five office locations. We are a professional services firm offering both public accounting and healthcare consulting services, uh, top 20 in the nation for our consulting and have been in business for over 35 years really focused on uh, collaboration, entrepreneurial mindset, um, um, and serving our clients in, in the best way possible. So looking forward to spending time with you. I think that last but not least, hi, I'm Jason Hamilton. I'm a tax partner here at Rotor Promos. We are a regional firm focusing mostly on audit and tax. We do have some consulting advisory work. We're located, we have nine offices in four states, Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia, and Indiana. And we are recruiting for audit and tax people. Look forward to, to talking with you guys. 
Great, thank you guys so much. So for the students, I just wanna give you an overview of how today's gonna to go. So we have a handful of questions that we have pre-assigned to different firms. So you're gonna to get to hear from everyone. And then at the end, if there's time, we will absolutely open it up to Q&A because you may have some follow-up questions from some of the questions that we um, ask of the panelists. So question one is for Novinger, Ball, and ZV and Deloitte. And the question is, how have expectations of professionalism changed, if at all, now that we're in a virtual work environment? Okay, I um, will start us off. So, um, you know, it's funny, I think in a lot of ways they haven't changed. Um, they just look a little bit different now. Um, for us at least, you know, um, one of the things that we've stressed is communication being just, you know, key at all levels. Um, a lot of us are back in the office now, um, obviously like social dis distancing and we have a lot of, um, you know, um, processes to keep everybody safe. But when we were all out of the office, it was just, you know, stressing um, the fact that, you know, you need to be available when you're available um, because we're still still a team um, and we do everything in such a, you know, a team aspect to our clients that um, there's still so much collaboration that's needed. Um, so we still need to be able to, to work together um, to help our clients. Um, so other than that, you know, I think just the common things like be available, work when, when you say you're going to work, um, still be professional, um, even though it looks different, a lot more video conferencing um, and things like that, you know, don't just work on the couch, you know, when, you know, if you have a meeting, especially if you have like Zooms with clients, like still maintain that professional appearance that's really important, um, you know, because it's still still the same job that we've done, you know, this whole time. It's just we're going about a little bit differently now. So so I think, um, you know, expectations are really, really the same. Um, and everybody's done a great job with that here. So. Yeah, Meredith, uh, this is Michael. I'll, I'll echo a lot of that. I, I think, you know, the expectations of professionalism really haven't changed almost like from a def, you know, definitional level. So, you know, neatness or having a courteous demeanor, competence, being ethical, right? All those are, are important, you know, now just as much as ever. Uh, something interesting I've noticed is it seems like, you know, a wall between one's personal life and one's professional life has come down, right? I've seen a lot of people's kids, dogs, roommates kind of barging into the room and and that's okay. You know, it's almost a new form of professionalism where we're bridging the gap between work and home and we have to navigate both of those. Um, my client has recently um, undergone a, um, a PCOB inspection, uh, which can be, you know, for, for those of you, um, you know, who will, will come to find out, it can be a pretty, pretty stressful environment. So we had an opening call and you know, it's a pretty, uh, pretty subdued affair, I'll say. And my boss is, is talking about um, some goodwill testing that was a focus area. And his chihuahua starts going absolutely nuts in the background. And uh, it completely, you know, it, it, it changed, you know, it, it, it kind of snapped everybody out of that kind of somber mood and, and broke the ice a little bit. He uh, uh, quieted Ben is, is the Chihuahua's name, and, and we went on with it. But I think, you know, point being, you know, professionalism is, is being able to, you know, maintain kind of, you know, at, almost at the definitional level how we would have interacted with, with each other. But knowing that, you know, the world does look a little bit different right now, it's okay, and, and moving forward with, with that. I think that, that, that's, uh, that, that's all I had. That's really good. I think we've all been on a call where something like that's happened. Absolutely. But that's the new normal, as they say. So thank you both. We appreciate your answers. Okay, so question two is for EY and PYA. What expectations of professionalism would you have of a intern, a first year, a new hire? And this could be expectations in a virtual environment or Hopefully, we'll all be back in person by the time these students start working for you guys. 
I can start us off. Um, I'll say this is always one of my favorite questions to answer, probably because you see a wave of relief kind of come over new hire space. Um, what I'll say is like, the first thing is we don't expect you to be experts. We will teach you so much of what we need you to know. Um, but now in a virtual setting, probably more than ever, what we are looking for and what we expect um, is that you're a great team player that you are willing to be flexible, to show up and put in an effort. Um, obviously those things are incredibly important in person, but when we're in a virtual environment, things happen, right? I mean, you'll lose Wi-Fi. you do have friends and family that might be coming into the room or chihuahuas or whatever that may be. Um, and so now there is probably an extra dose of grace and flexibility that is baked in um, in the virtual sphere. But what I would always say first and foremost is a great attitude. As corny as that answer may be, um, is really what we expect of you and we'll teach you the rest. And this is Katie Scott with PYA. Uh, I echo what Drew says about us teaching it, you. You know, we, we know that you've learned the fundamentals at an amazing school. UT's accounting and information management program is just the best. Um, and, you know, you, you come to us wherever you may land with the fundamentals, um, and we will guide you on, on how to actually work through those work papers or tax returns and all of that. Um, but to Drew's point that was that I agree with is that the, the expectations we have of our staff and interns are the same we'd really expect of anyone here you know, uh, the willingness to learn, the being positive, especially in this environment, we all need to be positive. Um, adaptability, um, proactive communication, that's probably the biggest thing um, because it is hard sometimes not seeing each other all the time. You're wondering kind of, um, you know, what everyone else's timetables are. So um, instant messenger, um, email, phone calls, texts, um, at least it's uh, 2020 versus 1980s where there's just a few more tools at our <laughs> disposal. Um, and then uh, just to conclude, also asking questions, but knowing you know when to ask a question, I think um, that's really key. And that's something that even as you get um, higher or, or more advanced in your career, it's, it's knowing when to go to, to um, your colleagues and when to just try to like sit and, and try to think through it yourself because you can't just walk down the hall to someone, um, uh, you know, or, or send them an IM and know that what you're talking about makes sense. So, but we hire, and I think all of these firms speaking today hire, you know, students that are at the top of their game and will be assets. So just know that you have the tools in your toolbox um, and that we're confident you'll know when to use them. Thanks, Katie and Drew. So our next question is for Crow and Burkhart and Company, and it is how can students work on their virtual professionalism now while they are still in college? Yeah, so I'll, t I'll start on this one. Um, one thing I think, I guess I've learned in particular about working virtually is it takes a lot of self-discipline to sit in front of your computer all day. No one's, you know, watching you and making sure you're there. And so I think, you know, to the extent that you guys now can treat your virtual classes like work and set a schedule and have a routine, that will help you when it comes to changing over to a virtual working environment because you'll already have that routine and be used to that. Um, another thing I think that's a little bit tougher in a virtual environment is, um, you know, being able to work on those interpersonal skills. Um, we're able to do all kinds of, you know, we can all work from wherever, um, you know, as, as CPAs and accountants, we're traveling all over the place, but, um, you know, so that part's easy, but, you know, having those relationships with our team members, uh, which helps with communication and having those relationships with our clients, that's the harder part um, in this environment. And so, you know, to the extent that you can, um, you know, make sure that you're doing virtual office hours or doing team Zoom calls and just making sure that you're kind of practicing that because that is a skill to be practiced, um, just kind of having that interaction um, with everybody. You know, we're missing out on that office time where we get to kind of chit chat with our team members and get to know them a little better. And, you know, we're not necessarily traveling together right now. So, um, you know, the more time you can spend on that and practice and, 
you know, talk to your teachers um, and your, your classmates and just be working on, on that. Um, I think you guys are actually at a really good advantage because you're doing school in a virtual environment. And so I think that'll actually really help um, when you transfer to, to working in a virtual environment. So I'll let yeah. you know. No, I agree. I echo the, uh, you know, setting up a good routine. I think that really keeps you, um, you know, going the right way. And it's easy to, like you said, lose focus when you're at home. There's distractions at home that you don't have uh, when you're sitting in the office. So it's, it's, it's easy to get stuck on those. And, you know, you guys now, I know you're having a lot of classes virtually, so you've got to practice, you know, being professional now in your classes. So setting up good habits uh, you know, at this point, I think are going to pay off you know, when you get into the workforce, because, you know, hopefully we're all back to normal by the time you guys are starting. But even with normal, I think just from the fact that we've all had to work so virtual for so long, you know, I think there's probably going to be a bigger component of this going forward than there ever has been in the past. Um, so it's just part of a new normal that we're going to have this, you know, virtual talking. And, you know, I think, you know, it's easy or easier in this virtual world to kind of, you know, skate by and kind of be under the radar. Um, but just make sure, you know, make yourself heard and ask a question. Don't just kind of blend into the background. Um, it would be easier to do, uh, you know, in this virtual environment. So, you know, I encourage you to, to do that, ask the questions and, you know, make sure you're, you're being heard. Great. Thank you both. Mm -hmm. Question four is for Deloitte and Rotifer Moss. What are some best practices of professionalism, both virtually and in person? Hey, this Hello. is Michael with, with the, go, go ahead, Jason, go ahead. Oh, sure, Michael. Okay, thank you, uh, Rachel. I appreciate the, the fact that we've got a theme of professionalism going on. I, I really appreciate that because, uh, you know, in, in this SCPAs, we are problem solvers and and work with uh, our clients to, to solve the problems, whether they're financial or, or tax. And, and the element of professionalism is, is important to, um, to, to, to gain our, our clients' respect. And so just some, some best practices that we have are, um, you know, dress the part and, you know, always know what the environment is going to be that you're going into. You want to always, um, don't want to come in overdressed or underdressed. Always focus and, and work on doing, uh, doing your job well. Be prepared. Ask questions, but also have answers to those questions uh, when you ask them. Um, as far as virtually specifically, you know, make sure, you know, that your computer is ready to go. Log on five, ten minutes early. Make sure that you're eye level instead of looking down on the computer. If you're, if you're looking down at the computer, it's a sign of disrespect uh, in some ways. Uh, check your audio settings um, and then pay attention to your background and always check to see what's behind you before uh, you get you log on so you never know what's coming back there uh, and in person it, it's really most of the same things I think maybe the one thing to take away is uh, to be professional do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it and I think that's uh, one way to sum it up so Michael yeah, Jason, I'm I'm lucky. Uh, I have a, a blank wall behind me, so so I suppose mm -hmm. uh, I can never be too surprised by, by what pops up. But I'll again echo a lot of what he said. I think preparedness is is a big one. Um, you know, people sometimes can have Zoom exhaustion uh, due to the high volume of meetings. You guys might might notice it as you know you start breaking into classrooms, small teams, or, or or other social groups. You know, being crisp, on point and relevant uh, during your meetings, I think is key to coming off as professional. I, I try to develop, a, you know, an agenda, a talk track, et cetera, before the meeting kicks off to really kind of drive the meeting and, and hopefully get your desired outcome in, in a timely manner. Um, I think my second point is, is presence is, is really key, especially in a, in a virtual environment. So, you know, having video turned on when it makes sense, I think is a great way to, to show that you know, you're really there for your teammate, your client, your classmate. Um, I think there's a risk in the virtual environment with, you know, interactions becoming almost almost transactional with your client or team. You get audit support, you send the list of questions back, 
you ask for status updates, maybe with, with your teammate, you know, um, at, at school, you ask for an update on the project, whatever, it can almost run the risk of feeling transactional um, as opposed to an opportunity to, to team and problem solve. So putting that video on and, and really showing that you're engaged, I, I think is key. Um, and really my final point is, is, is personality. I think coming across as professional doesn't mean that you have to be robotic. I think bringing your authentic self to work is critical, you know, in person and, and virtual as well. Um, you know, your classmates, this is something that, that I'm becoming increasingly aware of, you know, classmates, office mates, your clients, I mean, they're going to be the people that you work with over 40 years, right, of, of your career. So connecting with them on that personal level and showing your authentic self every day in a professional way, I, I think is key, both in the virtual environment and, and, and really outside of it. Yeah, I really agree with that. That's a really good point, Michael. It's important to be yourself and don't let this environment make you transactional and robotic and that sort of thing. So thank you both. All right, next question. So Novin Dribal and Zivi and EY. And the question is, what are some of the biggest no's or faux pas in a virtual work environment? Um, okay, I'll start off. Um, you know, this one, it, I think it, you just kind of have to use a little common sense. Um, really, you, you just kind of, I think, treat it as if you're working in the office. Um, I think I said it earlier, but communication, you know, for us is really important. Um, you know, if, if you say you're going to be working from home, you know, this day, then, you know, we expect people to be available. Um, not that you can't miss a call or something, but if somebody calls you, then just call them back. Um, you know, because we're still a team and, and you know, uh, don't just say you're going to work, but then go, you know, take the day off and not let anybody know. Um, so communication and just be there uh, when, when you say you're going to be there. Um, you know, I think I like what somebody said earlier. I think there is a little bit of an element of extra grace that's been given throughout the last few months, um, just with people trying to figure out how to work from home and get their set up. You know, it, it's harder for some people, I think, depending on, um, you know, I don't have kids, but I know that a lot of my coworkers had kids and they were obviously not in school, you know, um, until maybe today. Um, so, you know, that, I've been, super, you know, super admired people that I work with that kind of juggle that. So, um, you know, it's okay for your for your life to be seen. Like we'll have some, you know, meetings and some people's kids will walk by. Um, so it's neat to see that aspect of it. Um, but I think just, you know, stay professional. Like obviously don't um, be aware from the couch and like have meetings while you're just and on the couch in your three days. Um, so I think everybody probably realizes this thing. So I think just use use your judgment and use common sense um, and kind of just operate operate as much as you can like you were in the office. So um, and just don't take advantage of um, you know, I think you do have to have a little more um, self just a little you know, I don't know the word but a little more self control or it's a little harder sometimes maybe to just sit at, you know, your kitchen table or your desk, you're at home. Um, so I think that's a little bit harder, um, a little more self-discipline, but just, um, you know, I think it's, I'm grateful to be in a career where, you know, I can work from home and I'm at a firm where they're super flexible and they're totally fine with us working from home or, um, so I think just, just be grateful and don't take advantage of that. I can go to next. Um, I completely agree with with a lot of what people said, but Meredith and this one specifically, like communication is so key. Um, certainly, I think of things now like no one really knows when you're going to lunch. Um, and so you really do have to kind of let your team know like, hey, I'm going to go have lunch for 30 minutes. I'll be back. Um, those things are so key. But as we've also talked about the veil between your professional life and your personal life and how that's kind of been lifted some. Um, one thing I think of is also 
really making sure as we talk about no's and faux pas of like giving our team, our coworkers a break. Um, so like now that we are all at home, at least at EY and still, you know, with our phones and computers, it is so tempting to send that text or that email at nine o'clock at night because it's on the tip of your brain um, and to expect a response, but also really making sure that we are building those boundaries still and allowing people to have their own personal life um, just because we're home. So I would say that. And the other faux pas I feel like most of you know, but it's to everyone's point so far, it's really easy to slip back in them. It's still showing up and putting on at least, you know, maybe you're not as nice as you were when you were in the office, but at least not being in pajamas on your Zoom call, as tempting as that is. Um, unless you don't have to be on camera and then go for it. Um, but it's still kind of basic things like that, making sure that you're in a room with light so that people can actually see you, um, that you're not slumped down, or I can't tell you how many times I've seen this. Um, and those kind of looks just don't always signal to your team or to your clients in particular that you're here, you're ready to work and just because it is a virtual environment doesn't mean that those expectations go out the window. Great, thanks Drew and Meredith. So I think our next question is for PYA and Crow and the question is what have you learned since switching to a virtual work environment? This is Katie from PYA. Thank you, Rachel. And I mean, every day I feel like we're learning something new, not only about ourselves and how we you know, work best, um, but about our colleagues. And maybe even I feel like it's the pandemic has personalized relationships a little bit more. Um, I feel like people have more time for, you know, are really trying to find a better balance with family lives, work lives, all of that. But, you know, another thing is that technology is really, you know, decreased geographic lines. Um, everyone is just as easy. It, it's easier to connect with folks because we're all at home. So whether they're next door or at the other end of the country, um, we're all leveraging, you know, the technology mediums that are at our disposal. But really, I think it just as we think about this for, you know, the students that are on the call today and as they're preparing to meet with firms and um, all that lies ahead for them of, of them this week, um, you know, really encourage you to leverage, you know, even practice with a friend, um, you know, so that you're prepared for discussions with firms. So that means, I think someone mentioned testing your um, Wi-Fi or ensuring you have good lighting. You know, even now I'm questioning, am I too, <laughs> too light or is it too dark? Never quite sure. Um, you know, not having a distracting environment behind you. And then, you know, when you're on the call, you know, acting engaged, eye contact, smiling, all, all the things that, that um, the panelists have mentioned today. But you really want to, you know, pretend just like it is meet the firms. And it might even be healthy to have that, those nerves, you know, where you're a little bit excited, a little bit nervous, a little bit of all sorts of things going into it. Because even though it's video and it's not in person, there's a lot, there's a way that you can present yourself that puts you in the best light and will just and um, further help everything that's on your, your resume and um, will help you as you're thinking about an internship or a full-time role. Yeah, I love everything you just said, Katie. That's so true. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. I've learned a lot about the importance of structure as I've been home. I think when we all got sent home back in March, um, you know, we didn't know how long this was going to last and if it was going to be two weeks or four weeks or eight weeks or indefinite as it has been now and um you know at first it was easy to say well you know once we get back to normal i'll do this or i'll get back to working out or eating healthy or you know have my set wake up time or whatever and you know now that that's clearly not the case i think it's um important to have that structure in your life and say you know okay well this is what we're doing now so what am i going to do to add that routine to my day um, you know, limiting distractions like we've talked a lot about, you know, I find that I need to sometimes close my outlook for a little while or go on do not disturb just so I can kind of focus and get some things done. Um, there's a lot going on in our world right now and my phone dings a lot and sometimes I need to just set that aside and, um, you know, look, look at it later. Um, so limiting the distractions has been really important for me and that's helped me um, focus a lot more and, and just be more 
um, productive. And, you know, we've talked a lot about dress and clothing and I'll, I'll be honest, y'all, I do not get up and put on work clothes every day, <laughs> but if I know I have calls, I do that. But like some people need to get dressed and get ready and put makeup on to just kind of feel normal. And so know yourself and what is going to work for you and make you feel the most productive um, during the day. And we've talked a lot about boundaries. I think in addition to, you know, considering other people's boundaries, think about your own boundaries too. Um, you know, if you can have a designated work area, do that. And so it's not in your living room where you're going to be um, watching TV later um, so that you're, you can kind of separate work and home. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm, I have the bad habit of just kind of looking over at my computer and thinking, oh, I just had that, those couple more things to do, but you really do need to give yourself a break and step away and have family time or alone time or whatever that looks like for you. Um, overall, I think it's really important to stay in tune with our mental and physical well-being right now. Um, these are stressful times we're living in. And as we, you know, continue to figure out what this all looks like, um, you know, we're trying to make things seem as normal as possible. So, you know, take those breaks, find a good podcast or a book and just kind of take some time, time for yourself to, to de-stress. Great points, Katie and Maggie. Thank you so much for that. Okay, our last question, I believe. So students, this is where you should start thinking about any questions you have for the firms. So question seven is for Burkhart and Rhoda for Moss. And question seven says, how do you keep professional while working from a busy home with roommates, spouses, kids, pets, all that good stuff? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think keeping a really good schedule and calendar has been really important for me. Uh, you know, my wife's working from home too, and we've got kids and a dog here and just kind of coordinating with, you know, when does she have meetings that she can't go help the kids if they need something? And, you know, when do I need to have my time that I really can't be uh, disturbed? Uh, I think that's helped a lot. Um, you know, another piece, you just kind of have to be understanding through all of this like even during this call you know I'm in this room I've got the door locked my four-year-old picked the lock came in the room in the middle of the meeting already so you know it happens you can do everything you can to be uh you know professional and uh stay separate but you know it's a different world uh when everyone's at home everyone's here and under the same roof so you know just kind of be understanding for everybody everyone's in the same boat I think uh, the first thing that came to my mind is uh, how to keep it professional is uh, learn how to use that mute button because uh, we've had many yeah. Zoom calls and there's always something going on in the background and people turning and looking. So that's first, that's first tip number one. That's a pro tip number one right there. But uh, I feel like we're all given a, the same answers to all the real questions. And so this, sound, this may be repeating a little bit, but it's really prepare for your day. Set a schedule, get up, set goal, daily goals. Um, if you're doing that already as students, I mean, it just translates into, your, into the work world. Uh, and then, you know, and then honor, that, honor those commitments. I think someone else mentioned have a, have a dedicated workspace. This is where I go to work. Uh, I'm not, it's not the same place uh, where I play my video games or watch TV. We, we say in our group, uh, working remote, you've got to over-communicate. So you've got phone, text, you know, email, personal email. It's just coming at you from all directions. So just keep, copy everyone in a group. We work in a team environment, so make sure everyone's on the communications. Um, and then finally, and, and I want to, someone else mentioned it too, but take breaks. I mean, give yourself time away. You want to work at home. You don't want to live at work. So you want your house, your home to be your home where you have a where you have a work set off to the side. So I think that's that's basically it. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you guys. Well, so that is all the pre-made questions that we have. So I just want to thank all of the panelists for 
taking time out of your day, answering these questions. And now I wanna open it up to any students. So students, if you have questions for any of the panelists, you can post them in the chat and I'll read them, or you can unmute yourself and ask um, over that. So it's totally up to you guys. I have a question. Um, Y'all talked a lot about adjustments, working from home, but what, physical adjustments have you made to make your work area your work area? Because my desk is next to my bed and I just want to get in my bed sometimes. So what more do you think I could do to make it less homey? I think that's a great question, Denisha. And I think something that <laughs> is, uh, it's hard because you're, you know, your space is, you want to make the most of your space and have that separation, but that's not always possible. So if you do have another spot, even if you put up a card table, I know we were away this past weekend, but working for a day, I literally just kind of put a card table up somewhere and made it my own environment there. But I think having the separation, as a lot of these panelists have said, is important. So anything you can do there, or maybe even changing it up if it, you're close to your family and you can go to like your mother's house and you're kind of staying within your own pod there or a friend, maybe kind of doing that too and pretending like you're at the library or at Starbucks. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, um, I had a question. Um, I was just curious in this like more virtual environment, um, how has like your firm kind of maybe boosted the team morale or kind of like done more social events to really add that um, aspect that you would normally get in like the office setting? I'll take, uh, oh, go ahead, Meredith. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it quick. Um, just one thing that we've done uh, before COVID came, um, we had uh, lunches for the, our whole firm um, every other Wednesday, and we called it a huddle. So um, the partners would provide lunch, and then we would just use it as a time to like catch up um, any personal news anybody had, um, office announcements, or just anything that was kind of a neat way to everybody to be in one place um, regularly. So obviously um, we can do that, and we still can't do that right now. Um, so we started doing, uh, Zoom calls for the whole firm um, every other Wednesday so we could at least just like see each other's face. Um, not the same as being in the same building, but we at least got to see each other, share news, and just catch up um, with what everybody had been doing um, while we were out of the office. So that was kind of a, a neat thing, uh, a somewhat return to normalcy. Not exactly, but it was, it was a, nice, a nice touch for sure. Yeah, I think all of us have probably been on a few Zoom happy hours and that sort of thing, which is fun. But again, sometimes, you know, that that can get old, too. So um, now that things are opening back up a little bit, our group has gotten together for a couple like patio lunches and happy hours together. And, you know, even if it's just a small group or, you know, I might take one of my coaches out to lunch or something, um, getting together and that way we're getting fresh air too, we're outside. So, you know, to the extent we can, we are trying to be in person a little bit um, and still kind of be within guidelines. And so I think that's been been really good um, to have that. And then I have like uh, coaching check-ins with all my coaches too, to just kind of have that designated time to just say, how's, how's it going? Just tell me what's been going on and, and how you're feeling. And, you know, we always talk about that on all of our group calls, but some you don't want to say to a whole group, well, I had a terrible day yesterday. <laughs> so having that kind of coaching time is good and, and that in-person time when we can and when it's, you know, safe to do so. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Courtney, I'll, I'll add one, one thing that I think is, uh, it, it's, it's relatively small, but I think has been impactful. Um, I've rolled onto a new team, so we're trying to get to know each other and you know, even kind of normal standing meetings that we had, we had, you know, Zoom background, kind of themes of the day, something personal. So it might be your alma mater, which uh, in, you know, this call's case may not uh, elicit very many different responses, but it might be your favorite vacation spot, your favorite sport, whatever it was. And so even just a, a normal meeting, we take the first five minutes to learn about each other and 
and uh, and and really, you know, ho hopefully learn a fun fact or, or whatever it is, connect in a different way before diving into it. That that was something creative that I thought was actually pretty pretty impactful for us. I actually think we're learning more about each other's person, everybody's personal life now because you're seeing people's kids and dogs and things that are hanging in their home office and you're and you're asking more questions and so that's actually been kind of fun. I feel like we're getting to know more about people than or or meeting their kids even if we hadn't before because they joined yeah, the college. Definitely. So that's actually been kind of fun. Cool. Thank you. I have a question. Um, with the elimination of most travel, how has that impacted roles with a large travel component? Well, well we can't travel anywhere. <laughs> this is the longest I've gone in my career without going anywhere, but, um, you know, it's required a lot more kind of training our clients to provide things um, electronically. Um, we're actually totally changing our um, client information portal now um, because we're getting a lot more use out of that and you know a lot I think you know probably a lot a lot of clients in this hopefully a lot of clients in this day and age are providing things in a virtual manner but um, you know some of my clients have required some training on that and we have to kind of educate them about you know if things are secure and what the best you know maybe email is not actually the best way to send things and, and that sort of thing but um, I think it requires a lot more proactivity on our part um, as far as maintaining that client relationship. You know, when we're in front of them at their office, you know, we're meeting with them probably multiple times a day and, and speaking to them, but, you know, so maybe we're scheduling daily Zoom calls with them or, you know, kind of having a designated check-in time, but definitely just requires us being more um, proactive um, with them. And, you know, we keep talking about communication, but, it applies here too, just over communicating with them and, um, you know, making sure they know our, our availability. This is kind of, and I'm, I'm, I'm a tax guy, so we, we stay in the office most of the time, but I'm, it's kind of a contra answer to yours. We, we've always gotten information from our clients remotely. So I think it's, uh, our audit team does a lot of traveling, but they've borrowed from us and, and taken points and had, like she said, secure portals to get information. And it's just, it's just a different type of communication. So instead of being, you know, face to face in the office, now it's, you know, you just set Zoom meetings or phone calls and just kind of replacing it with being in, in, in office. And I think it's, a, I think if we're finding out it's more efficient and, and we're getting more done in less time. And so I think this is, a lot of these elements are going to be here to stay uh, in the future. And I think, I think it's a good thing, a good thing coming out. I think a lot of clients are seeing the, the travel cost savings and saying, oh, let's keep doing this going forward. <laughs> Save a lot of money. Actually, I actually have a quick question. Uh, what challenges have you seen from new employees or associates, you know, who start out working from home? And uh, what do you recommend to overcome these challenges? We've actually had a couple of people start. I'll start off we, uh, while while we've been on COVID. As you can see, we have a we've opened our offices back up to limited staff for about one third capacity. So those that have offices have come in, but for those new new hires, we we bring them into the office and have a uh, like a not really like a buddy system. So there's someone at the next level up to kind of help them and help them get trained here locally, so we can still maintain you know, safe uh, social distancing and wearing masks in the common areas. So that's, that's the way we're addressing it. I had a quick question. Um, for like, uh, if you're doing internships um, for like a sum, the, during the summer, how do you think that will be different um, for those students doing an internship? Hey, Elizabeth, this is this is Michael uh, with Deloitte. I, speaking from a little bit of experience, um, this past summer's interns were remote. Um, and instead of the traditional 
um, call it two month internship. It was, uh, I believe, shortened to to two weeks. Um, you know, I can't speak with any sort of authority, you know, in the future, this upcoming spring or, or certainly ne next summer. But, you know, I think really one of the biggest takeaways that, that I've felt is, you know, with the right preparation, you know, we can do this. We, we can work remotely. You know, as Jason said, you know, in, in some ways we, we, we are more, more efficient. So, you know, I see Elizabeth, you know, maybe what happened this, this past summer um, and, and Chase, who's, who's part of our recruiting team, um, could speak uh, more articulately to it, you know, after um, in another session or, or, you know, we can reach out to him with, with more questions. But, you know, I certainly see that evolving and, and I certainly see that the intern role, you know, rising and, and the start classes, really people, um, you know, us learning, you know, how we can do this virtually and, and, and hopefully, you know, in, in the future, even remote uh, intern classes, you know, that the tasks look, uh, look as similar as, as possible. So it's a good question. This is Katie with PYA, and for our audit on um, the tax interns, we, we had them working on billable work. Um, and, you know, that's tough going straight from accounting 301 to, to um, actually, you know, dealing with client deliverables. But I think what Michael was saying, and that I, all the firms are doing a great job, whether it's an intern or a full-time hire, you know, it, it's pretty amazing that the pandemic is still occurring and we're able to bring on um, these people and give them this opportunity. Um, because I think that a lot of firms are making sacrifices in other places to ensure you know, that they're cognizant about um, you know, growing the pipeline for the firm and, and serving our clients. So I think there's a lot of thought going into even just you know, daily businesses, not to mention new hires and, and, and long-term you know, with interns. So, I think regardless, and as it's longer, the longer this continues, we're, we're getting better at it. So um, I think that's one thing that's, that's likely consistent amongst everyone you're speaking with today. I hope so. <laughs> I hope the panelists are in agreement. <laughs> Thank you. So we have one question in the chat and it's for those of you who are in an audit role and it kind of goes back to the fact that you're not traveling as much as you could. So how do you physically test for existence of assets, inventory, or equipment if travel and your face-to-face -face encounters are now limited? I know we've been doing um, some virtual inventory counts, which has been inter interesting. I actually have a call about that on Friday because that's what we're gonna try to get our clients to default to for upcoming inventory counts. I've not personally done one, but I've heard they're fun and interesting. Um, but, you know, so we're doing some virtual inventory observations. Um, but, you know, be, definitely be curious to hear from other people what you guys are doing. Is anyone using drones for their inventories? Or We've done drones for some uh, job site visits for construction sites. That's good. Cool. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions? I have a question. Yep. Sorry, you can go. All right, all right. I have a question for the panelists. I was wondering if you guys anticipate any permanent changes to the way you conduct business post COVID. Uh, yeah, I, I think there'll probably be some permanent changes. You know, I think, you know, there are certainly good things and bad things that have come from having to be home. Um, but we've proven we can do it. Um, and it provides a lot more flexibility to everybody. Um, just being able to do it this way. Um, so I think there's probably going to be a larger component of, you know, virtual working and working from home going forward, even after, you know, there's not really a a necessity to do it. Uh, so I, I think that's going to be more here to stay. And there's certainly some more efficient things about this. I think Jason mentioned it, that, you know, you, you don't have travel time. You can 
pull someone up and chat with them immediately. So we're, we're finding out some, some good things from this too. Yeah, Matt, I, I agree. The less we're, we're tethered to, uh, to one geography, I think the more opportunity that there is for us, for us all to, to, to grow our business. You know, I see my current team is, is global. We have some team members in, in India, some in Dallas, some in San Francisco. Um, so we've already, you know, kind of experienced that, that large footprint model. And I, I think that'll continue where we can bring the right talent regardless of, of geography um, to a problem. And, and conversely, you know, your expertise, everybody on this, uh, on, on this call's expertise can solve a problem now uh, around the world, whereas maybe, you know, our, our frame of reference was kind of bound by, by geography. So I see a lot of, a lot of opportunity here. I'd like to just echo a little bit of what Michael said. Uh, there is, uh, you guys are coming into a profession where we're, like I mentioned earlier, we're problem solvers and people are going to have problems regardless. And so we now just have different tools to, to meet these. I mean, it's just an example. We would, uh, for returns, we used to have to meet with every client to get a signature. Now we can send everything virtually and get an e-signature. But I think it's a, it's a good time to be, for you guys coming into the profession, because I think the profession is going to be here going forward. Uh, it's going to be everything. There's going to be changes that come out of it. But I think it's still, uh, I think it's a lot of positives for everyone. Because I, I don't know, some industries are done, like the movies. Who goes to a movie anymore? I mean, we've had more work. This has been the busiest summer we've had in, since I've been practicing. So I think it's a great opportunity for new people coming in. I just want to throw that out there. Any other questions? We've probably got time for about one more. Okay, well, it doesn't sound like we have any more, but I just wanna thank all of our panelists for coming. I know even from my perspective, having gone through a lot of what you're talking about already, it was exceedingly helpful. So I am sure for the students it was too. So we really appreciate you giving up an hour of your time in this hectic environment. Um, and we are just, yeah, so grateful for your relationship with UT and your interest in our students. So thank you guys. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Rachel. Good luck, Thank everybody. You. Good luck, everyone. We'll see you later right. this week. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much.